Hello, Ms. Talbot. Hi, Ms. Talbot. My name is Patrick Williams. I'm with the Providence Gazette. I believe my editor told you I would be calling on you. Here is my card. Yes, my editor believes that our readers would be interested in hearing about a modern woman in post-Civil War Providence. Well, I am a modern woman, Mr. Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Please, have a seat. Why, thank you. Would you like some water? That would be very nice, thank you. Do you mind if I take notes? Not at all. And to prepare for this interview, I have brought my own notes. <laughs> and so you don't forget your lines. <laughs> Modern woman. <laughs> well, let's get started. Please tell me a little bit about your background. Starting with my childhood, Mr. Williams. Starting at the very beginning. Why, I do believe I'm feeling rather nervous talking to the press, Mr. Williams. Can I offer you some courage? <laughs> yes, I would like some courage, Mr. Williams. If this is to be a good interview, I'll need to loosen my tongue. <laughs> Two loosened tongues, Miss Talbot. <laughs> I will take notes. <coughs> July 12, 1876. Well, let me start. My father was Bailey's Talbot, the Reverend Bailey's Talbot. He was a minister in the Episcopal Church, a graduate of Trinity College, and mother is Mary Starling. In 1845, father was rector of St. Stephen's Church here in Providence. And in 1850, when they built the new church in Smithfield, St. Thomas Church, father and mother moved to the cottage next door. Do you know that church, Mr. Williams? Yes, I do, the one on the Putnam Turnpike. Yes, that's the one, opposite the Waterman Tavern. <laughs> well, I was born in that cottage next door in 1851. And when I was five years old, my little brother Willie was born. We were best friends growing up, Mr. Williams. How sweet. Now, let me ask you, were you artistic as a child? <laughs> yes, I would say so. I would write children's stories and read them to Willie. And I would make little pictures to go with them. He loved them. And he would say, Eleanor, you should make books for all children to read. They would love them. And mother would say, Eleanor, you have real talent. And she would make sure I had pencils and paper and paints to work with. Always good to have parental encouragement. I so agree, Mr. Williams. <laughs> now tell me, what precipitated your move to Providence? When I was 14 and Willie 9, a real tragedy struck our family, Mr. Williams. It's a hard story to tell. It was in early summer. We were all home. Father was in his study. Willie and I were together. And a severe storm came through suddenly. Wild lightning and thunder. Then I heard a loud crack of lightning, and I heard Father scream. Mother went running towards the study, and we ran too. And when we got there, Father was on the floor, and Mother was kneeling next to him. He'd been struck by lightning through the window, Mr. Williams. He was alive, but barely. Two months later, he died. I'm so sorry to hear this. After we buried Father, we had to move from the cottage. It was owned by the church, and a new minister was coming. So Mother, Willie, and I had to pack. And we came to the city, here to Providence. We moved to a boarding house. We moved quite a bit, boarding house to boarding house, Apples Avenue, Broadway, off Broadway. We're currently living in a boarding house on Almond Street. And as soon as I finished my education, I got a job teaching. I've taught at several schools, Mr. Williams. 
And then I started my own school. Miss Eleanor W. Talbot Select School, 10 Thomas Street, in this very building, the Dodge House. And as you can see, my art studio is here also. I'm in the directory, Mr. Williams. You may keep this for your records. Why, thank you. So you were here in the Dodge House in the 1870s. Yes, Mr. Williams, that is a little known fact. <coughs> You have a school. <laughs> <laughs> now please tell me, have you exhibited your art publicly? Yes, my painting Children at Play is on exhibit as we speak in Philadelphia in the Centennial Exposition, <clears throat> hanging in the Women's Pavilion. There are other province artists hanging there as well. Yes, I believe Mr. Edward Bannister won a prize in that exposition. Yes, he won an important award. We were all so happy for him. Now, when you say we were all, so there is an active art community in Providence? Yes, indeed. I know quite a few artists. Rosa Peckham, Harriet Chase, Catherine Austin, and then there's Sidney Burley, Edward Bannister, George Whitaker, and many others. All respected artists in our city. And we are currently discussing having our own showroom and gallery here in the city to sell our work. So this is being discussed now. And I understand many of the Providence artists study in Europe, Paris in particular. Ah, Paris. Who wouldn't want to go to Paris to study art? I know I would, but I doubt that would be in my future, Mr. Williams. You know, Rosa Peckham is there as we speak, studying art in Paris. And I'm happy for Rosa. But let me point something out, Mr. Williams. Rosa Peckham is 10 years older than I am. And she is still being supported by her father, a doctor. I am 25 years old. I am a businesswoman. I am a writer. I am an artist. I am a teacher. And I am supporting Mother and Willie. <laughs> and I am very proud of that. As you should be. And that is why my editor asked me to write this story about an accomplished independent woman, a modern woman. Well, I believe I have what I need for my article. I will bid you goodbye, Miss Talbot. Pleasure meeting you, Mr. Williams. Pleasure is mine. I am sure. <laughs> My, look at the time. It's four years later. <laughs> June, 1880. Why, Mr. Williams? Nice to see you. I saw the article in the paper. Everybody's been talking about it. Did you receive my letter? Thank you. I did. And our readers have been so enthused, my editor asked me to come back to get more of your story. You flatter me, Mr. Williams. Please sit down. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to hear what's new in your life, Miss Talbot, since I saw you last. Right, Mr. Williams. 1880 has been the most exciting year of my life so far. There's so much exciting news to share, I don't know where to start. Do you remember I mentioned that several artists in the city wanted to open up a gallery in a showroom? I do recall that. Well, we finally did it. In February of this year, we met at the Whiteland Building around the corner. There were 16 of us. We signed a compact that night and formed the Providence Art Club. We were 10 men and six women. And of course, the women will have equal rights, Mr. <laughs> Unlike other art clubs we've been reading about who won't even let women join. I'm very aware of that. Now, has your new club had any meetings? 
Yes, we organized our first general meeting in March in the Wayland Building. We were hoping to get new members. There was a notice about it in the paper. From the Providence Journal, March 13, 1880. The Providence Art Club held its first general meeting last evening at the studio in the Wayland Building by invitation of the ladies who gather there to pursue the study of art. The response to the invitation was so general and enthusiastic that there could be no doubt as to the interest felt in this movement. The harmonious impulses which brought the company together seemed in unison with the soft light of the multitude of waxen tapers that illuminated the scene. <laughs> the fragrance of flowers and the presence of their fair hostesses themselves lent a charm to the auspicious opening which will be long remembered. An address by the President, Mr. Lincoln, was followed by the reading of the Constitution and during the recess allowed for signing for membership. The list speedily mounted to more than 100 names. The Art Club, accordingly, may now be considered as successfully inaugurated, and we shall hopefully await the results of this association. And it was a huge success. 112 new members signed up the very first night. How impressive. And I have more exciting news to share with you, Mr. Williams. I met a new Providence Art Club member, a gentleman. His name is Ava Dyke Smith. He's a businessman and an artist. We are engaged to be married. <laughs> Can you imagine two Providence Art Club members, both artists, married to one another? <laughs> I can imagine. Life is interesting, isn't it, Mr. Williams? Very interesting. Now, has your club stage any exhibitions? Yes, we had our first exhibition in May. I have my catalog with me. I am the second artist listed, Mountain Laurel by Eleanor W. Talbot. You may keep that for your records. <laughs> there was a notice about the exhibition in the paper. From the Providence Journal, <laughs> April 22nd, 1880. The new Providence Art Club will challenge attention to itself and its proposed work by opening its first exhibition on the 12th of May in its room, number 18, Hoppin Homestead Building. The exhibition will comprise exclusively the original work of professional and amateur artists resident in this city and state and vicinity and will form an interesting initial point from which hereafter to trace the progress of art development and culture incident to the pleasant movement which has been commenced so successfully by our artists and their friends. In more exciting news, Mr. Williams, I wrote, illustrated, and published my first children's book. I have it here. Wonder Eyes and What For by Helena W. Talbot, published in 1880. And I have a sample of some of my illustrations. Aren't they dear? <laughs> Was that little boy inspired by little brother Willie? I always used to draw Willie in my pictures, and that's me in the wheelbarrow. How oh dear. <laughs> and then I published my second book, Mr. Williams, The Mother Goose Goslings by Eleanor W. Talbot. New York, London, and Paris. <laughs> you did make it to Paris finally, Miss Talbot. Through my books, yes I did. Is there anything further you'd like me to know for this article? 
Well, our art club continues to grow. We need larger space. I'm keeping my eye on the brick building next door. I think it would make a wonderful home for our art club. It certainly would be convenient for me. <laughs> well, I will be on the lookout for this news. And I have the what I need for this second article, Miss Talbot. I thank you for your time. You are very welcome. I look forward to reading your article. Good day. Good day. <laughs> Well, here we are, seven years later. <laughs> Time flies. Yes? Hello, Miss Talbot. Why, Mr. Williams, you have your back, sir. Yes, I have. You are looking fine, Mr. Williams. You haven't aged a day since I've seen you last. <laughs> Seems that way. <laughs> and you as well, my dear. <laughs> and it doesn't appear you've made much progress on that. <laughs> well, I am a perfectionist. <laughs> Please, thank you. A perfectly modern woman. <laughs> Eleanor, how was your life? I am now 36 years old. I have been married to Alba Dyke Smith for six years now. We have no children yet, but I do hope for a baby someday. We're now living on Condon Street at number 55, a grand house. And of course, mother lives with us. No more boarding houses for us, Mr. Williams. We live opposite Prospect Terrace. Do you know the park? The one with the view of the city? Yes, very well. <laughs> and do you remember my artist friend, Catherine Austin, who lives down the street on Palm? Well, Catherine told me she wrote an anonymous letter to the Providence Journal suggesting they name the new park Prospect Terrace. And they published her letter. And shortly afterward, they named the park Prospect Terrace. I Imagine a Providence Art Club member, a founder nonetheless, who named the most prominent park in the city. Another little known fact, Mr. Williams, and another scoop for you. <laughs> Just call me Scoop Williams. <laughs> now, have you been in any other exhibitions? Yes. Do you remember my painting, Children at Play, the one that was in Philadelphia? Well, it's on exhibit now, in New Orleans. You get around, young lady. <laughs> Have you published more books? Yes, another children's book called jack o Lantern and Other Rhymes. And a book that's quite different for me. It's called My Lady's Casket, Jewels and Flowers for Her Adorning. It's a rather frivolous book for women but I do believe the illustrations in it are my finest yet. You keep improving. Now, are you doing anything beyond your art and your writing? I've become quite busy with charities for children. The Children's Friends Society in particular, who have built a home for needy children in the city. I am an officer for that society, and so is Mother. We are both quite devoted to children's charities. and. I'm on the board of management for Rhode Island School of Design. That fledgling little school? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what will become of it. I can only wonder. And how is your art club doing? Well, I'm happy to report that the art club continues to grow. We now have over 250 members. And do you know the new Florida Lee building, two doors down, the one that Sidney Burley built? It's the most talked about building in the city. Yes, well, it's an art studio. And last year, a number of artists moved in. And the Providence Art Club finally found a new home. They leased and renovated the brick building next door. We finally have a clubhouse. I have to say that Thomas Street has become quite lively with artists. 
And I do believe I started this trend, Miss Dooley. <laughs> I was the first artist here on Times <laughs> A pioneering modern woman. <laughs> would you like to add anything else for this interview? Well, Mr. Williams, I would say that now, at age 36, I'm feeling quite content, accomplished, and fulfilled. I'm pleased with how my life is turning out, Mr. Williams. As you should be. Well, I have enough for my third article. I will bid you goodbye. I look forward to reading the article, Mr. Williams. It's been a pleasure speaking with you again. A pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Talbot. Yes? May I ask one last question? Of course. Who are these people? <laughs> 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 they are the future, Mr. Williams. <laughs> Thank you for listening to her story, and I bid you good.